thanks, everyone. And uh, Anne-Marie, just a wonderful, wonderful chat. Uh, made me think about my own identity. And, uh, and I'm, uh, uh, you know, so, so, so where I come from, uh, I've, I've always been in the software industry. Uh, and uh, we've always thought about how can software actually help change different industries. And uh, I've been in education now for about 10 years. Uh, and uh, give you a little bit of a background of myself. I came from uh, a company called Illuminate, uh, which has had a long relationship uh, with Alsi. Uh, and, uh, and we've been doing uh, uh, this conference now, I think, for a good five or six years. Um, where remote people can join in. I know today uh, we're actually using Adobe, so uh, so a wonderful product uh, in its own right. So uh, so it's uh, it's it's interesting. It's interesting to actually be simulcasted in Adobe today. Uh, it's always fun to uh, fun to challenge your own identity there. Uh, so let me start out. Uh, I, I come here uh, as as uh, a representative of Blackboard today. And I decided I would, I would start out with what it is that Blackboard thinks of themselves. And, and they have a very expansive uh, sort of vision. You know, the vision really is everyone educated. And I'm not really sure that uh, we'll, we'll actually achieve that vision in my lifetime. Uh, but, but I think it's, it's a worthwhile thing to obviously aspire towards. And the idea is let's, let's try to see what it is that we can do to go ahead and get education every place that there is for those who have access. Let's try to make it a much better experience uh, uh, compared to what it is today. And for those who don't have the access, let's try to figure out you know, how, do we, how do we actually get there. Um, from, a, from a reach perspective, you know, Blackboard actually has, a, has an amazing reach, uh, 8,700 uh, different institutions from all around the globe. Uh, including colleges, universities, K-12, corporate. You know, and, I, and I put this uh, slide up not really to boast about the number of customers that Blackboard really has, but the idea that, uh, that there's a lot of practice that Blackboard folks have really become used to. How do we go ahead and make sure that certain things happen in certain ways and we get the most return on that investment? Technology is an expensive investment in education. How do we make sure that from a practice perspective, uh, we are able to go ahead and figure out what the best practices there really are? Uh, so Blackbird's actually gone ahead and, uh, and done a lot of that research um, and, and gone out and figured out how it is that we should go ahead and deploy these technologies to be able to get the best return that, uh, that's actually possible. And, and you know, trying to make sure, you know, I know that uh, that within uh, all C, uh, I've, I've presented to other uh, associations in the U.S., for example, the Sloan Consortium, which I think is a similar uh, association there. The, the issue always is how do we, uh, and we still seem to be stuck on this after many, many years of online education, how do we make sure that online education uh, is as good as face-to-face? -face? Uh, and and you know, you, you, we need to go ahead and, and almost get beyond that question. Uh, because uh, there's research out there. Uh, you know, we've had uh, research published by Alt-C, by Sloan Consortium, by the U.S. Department of Education, many other places. And what we've been able to do now is basically take that research, put it into practice at thousands of customers, and hopefully we can go ahead and help, uh, help others do the same. Give you a little bit of uh, overview of what it is that Blackboard actually does. Um, most people think of Blackboard and they think of the learning management system, the virtual learning environment. Well, Blackboard is actually a, a, a very big organization now. Uh, so obviously the, the teaching and learning, the virtual learning environment is there. Uh, I come from a division within Blackboard called Collaborate, and I'll get into a little bit more detail about Collaborate, but I figured I should at least mention the rest of the platforms that Blackboard actually brings to bear. Uh, so the, the learn environment is there, the collaborate environment is there. There's a, uh, there's a product and then a platform called Blackboard Connect. And I believe we have uh, some folks from the Blackboard Connect side actually in the, in the stand, in the exhibit hall. Uh, and Blackboard Connect is there for mass notification. Uh, once again, the idea really is how do we figure out what technology can do to bring engagement back into education? Uh, so Blackboard Connect allows you to go ahead and, and pick the medium uh, according to what the receiver wants to be. 
So some people might want voicemails, other people might want emails, other people might want Facebook messages, other people might want text messages uh, in order to be able to get the information across to them. As an institution, you can pick which message you want to send out uh, and then Connect allows you to go ahead and, uh, and allow the receiver to pick whichever medium that they want to receive, whether it's voicemail or text or whatever the case might be. Uh, Blackboard Transact uh, is primarily a US-based uh, operation, and it's really to ensure uh, that when you get the student ID card, the student ID card can go ahead and be used in a wide variety of things. You can uh, use it for, uh, for transactions on your campus, for uh, buying meals, uh, for uh, using at the bookstore, or even going off campus uh, and doing transactions with, uh, with local customers or with local merchants. Uh, and, and security aspects, so being able to get access to the right uh, dormitory room or, or whatever the case might be. So that's the transact piece. Analytics is a brand new piece that Blackboard just acquired uh, from, uh, from uh, a company called iStrategy just at the beginning of this year. Uh, and the idea there really is how do we make sure that we are able to take all of this data uh, that exists in all the different silos within a a university system and be able to go ahead and make decisions based on that. Uh, you know, to a large extent, I sort of feel like uh, education is actually a step behind the commercial uh, entities in, in, in this space. Uh, you know, when I'm in the US, I sort of use the example of uh, uh, a bookstore. Uh, they're called Borders. Uh, Borders uh, had been around for probably 50 years and, uh, and just actually finally uh, is going out of business. In fact, it was the, the situation was so bad they couldn't find anybody to even buy out the name, so the stores are completely being liquidated. And I think uh, you know, that's sort of a very stark example uh, of, a, of an institution which didn't really make that transition uh, to what it is that consumers today really want. And I think to a large extent from an educational perspective, you know, we're getting these consumers uh, you know, who are now students or who are now teachers, and we need to make sure that, that we're, we're able to go ahead and adapt our educational environment. So Blockbusters was, or, or sorry, Borders was competing with, uh, uh, with Amazon.com, and Amazon.com, you know, they, they're fans of data. They collect data on everything that there is. They collect data on what you buy. They collect data on what it is that you like. They collect data on what it is that other people who like things similar to yours. They collect reviews. They collect reviews about reviews. And so all of this data then is, is fed into a big analytics database to figure out what is going to be the best experience possible for the person that they're trying to serve. Oh, you know, and from our, our perspective, obviously that's the student and the teachers, and we need to go ahead and make sure that we collect all of those analytics and are able to, uh, to transform their experience. And I think that's what analytics really allows you to do. Mobile doesn't, uh, doesn't probably need a lot of, uh, a lot of indication. Uh, I see lots and lots of uh, laptops open, uh, some iPads open, some, some folks I'm sure are doing their email and things on iPhones. Uh, <laughs> I see people pointing to each other. <laughs> so, so you know, you don't, we don't, we don't need to, uh, we don't need to talk about mobile that much. We know we're experiencing that on an ongoing basis, and and the entire educational experience needs to be taken there. So, Blackboard's obviously working on that. And then the the, the underlying structure is the Blackboard Services side. So it's a it's a it's a vast uh, vast array of technology that that Blackboard can really bring to bear. What I'm going to talk about today is collaborate. And, uh, and what it is that we do and how it is that we can really help uh, both uh, you know, improve the student outcomes and, and how, do you, how do you go ahead and measure sort of the dollars and cents, the return on investment uh, of all of that. I'll set the stage a little bit. <clears throat> the, the Blackboard Collaborate organization actually came into being just last year in August of 2010. Um, Blackboard decided, uh, as, as they want to do on an ongoing basis, to figure out what else their customers might want. Uh, and uh, they acquired two companies. One was called Vimba and one was called Illuminate. Let me just see a show of hands. How many people knew Vimba? Oh, good, good percentage. And how many knew Illuminate? Wow, wow, almost the same. <laughs> so so this, this was actually true uh, you know, across, the, across the world. We basically uh, split the educational institutions into a fairly 50-50 uh, sort of a place where half the folks used Illuminate, half the folks used Vimba. 
And when Blackboard tried to get into the space, they decided, well, the best thing to do, rather than leaving one half in a lurch, is to go ahead and combine all three of the organizations, Blackboard and Wimba uh, and Illuminate. And, and come up with something uh, that's, that's, that's really best for both. You know, and what it really allows you to do is sort of, you know, half the people raise their hands in Wimba, half the people raise their hands in Illuminate. If you can combine that community of users together, hopefully we can go ahead and do something good. And I'll, I'll share with you a little bit about what it is that we have done. Now, before I go there, why, why you know, it says Blackboard Collaborate, but really, why even collaboration? You know, what's, what's, the, what's the point? Uh, uh, of, of having a collaboration platform. You know, so I, I, I kind of talk about, you know, this is a pretty exciting time for education. Uh, you know, at a touch of a button, we can go ahead and have these sorts of sessions. So today, uh, I'm not sure how many folks are coming in online. Do you? 43. So 43 folks are coming in online. Uh, so welcome, uh, everybody there. Uh, you know, and, and that kind of thing is possible. They're co probably coming in from all over the world. Um, and it's, so it's, it's an exciting time. I can go ahead and, and reach people everywhere that there is. Uh, but, but, but at the same time, I think it's a, it's a tough time. You know, I, I, looked at the, I looked at the brochure for All C, and it was thriving in a colder and more challenging climate. And, and certainly, I think we find ourselves in that. Uh, you know, I sort, of, uh, I sort of talk about this is almost a perfect storm for further education, for higher education. Uh, because we're being asked to do you know, three very contradictory things. The first one is the number of students actually keeps growing. So there's the demographic aspects of that, you know, more and more uh, children in the world. Uh, so we need to figure out how to go ahead and educate them. Um, there's, there's the aspect of the economy, uh, where uh, many of the folks are unemployed or underemployed. Uh, and they want to be able to go ahead and retrain themselves to be doing something else. So that goes ahead and increases the number of student count. So larger student count than ever before. Uh, at the same time, we're also talking about how do we go ahead and transform education. Uh, you know, we, we heard uh, the medical education from Anne-Marie and, and how for the last 100 years we've been hearing this criticism of this curriculum is too big and it's too complex and, and we need to do better for each of the students. So we got way more students and for each student we want to have a much better experience and at the same time the funding keeps going down. Uh, so the amount of money that we have on a per student basis is lower than ever. So it's sort of that perfect storm. and. Uh, and we need to figure out how to deal with that one. And I, I, I do think that an education-focused collaboration environment actually goes ahead and, and makes a big difference. You know, it allows uh, learning you know, to, be, to be less structured, to be more open, uh, you know, really allows it to be more interactive, more collaborative. Uh, you know, we talked about wikis, we talked about Facebook in the, in the session before with Anne-Marie, and, and, and it's, you know, you're absolutely right, you know, there, there, are, uh, th there are transformational things that are happening. Uh, and, and, you know, having that collaboration, you know, how, how else could you have done the, the chat, uh, chat rooms that you're doing? Yes, the 140 characters is limiting, but it's sort of very freeing to be able to actually go ahead and enable this open forum as, as and when you want on whichever topic. Uh, that you actually want. So I think that collaboration environment actually makes a big difference. And you know, specifically from a Blackboard Collaborate perspective, when I think about ROI, you know, I sort of think about three different things. You know, the first one is improved outcomes. You know, that's that's kind of the the goal of education. We want to make sure that uh, we do as good a job as possible. Uh, and adding just a little bit of interaction, you know, on a on a virtual learning uh, sort of stage we know that students can feel very isolated. Uh, we know that, uh, especially if, if they're not coming into a physical uh, space like this, if they're doing all online, uh, they can feel very, very isolated. So adding just even a little bit of synchronous uh, teacher-student interaction, student-to-student -student interaction, uh, leads to significantly increased understanding. And there's enough research out there on that. And if, uh, if you folks are looking for that, just come uh, talk to me. I have my cards. And I'll, I'll be happy to go ahead and point out some of those things and, and send you some papers. But the second one is it actually helps universities and colleges sort of increase the revenue. Uh, we know, just like uh, you know, borders, uh, our, our, our perimeters are under attack. Uh, you know, we need to figure out how to go ahead and, and work in this globalized environment. Uh, so I've got uh, 
Arizona State University. I live in uh, Phoenix, Arizona in the United States. It's now the largest university that there is in, uh, in the States. 70,000 students from all over the country and all around the world actually come to Arizona State. Used to be, if, if I was in a university, I could pretty much count on you know, the students who are around me as they graduate from high school, that they're, they're going to come to my university. Well, that's not true anymore, right? Uh, university of Phoenix is all over the place. The Open University is all over the place. Uh, Arizona State is all over the place. We need to figure out how to go ahead and, and be able to deal with uh, those sorts of institutions. And I think having, a, having an environment which allows you to engage students, no matter where it is that they happen to be, which allows you to engage your community, no matter where it is that they are. In, engage even with your alumni uh, after they leave uh, the, the educational process, you know, helps significantly. And then last but not least on the return on investment side is just the reduction of costs. Uh, in order to really accommodate this many more students who are coming in, we can't build enough facilities. Uh, you know, it's just not possible. So I know many of our customers, instead of doing that, uh, what they'll say is instead of meeting in a physical environment three days a week, let's just meet in the physical environment once a week or maybe even once a month. And the rest of the meetings are all going to happen virtually. Uh, and it actually leads to being able to accommodate a far larger number of students in the existing space uh, that you've actually got. Uh, you can go ahead and use the same instructors. Uh, you can go ahead and reduce travel, things like that. So, so that's kind of the overall view of why it is that you would want to do collaboration in general. Uh, what does Blackboard really do? Uh, give you just a, a quick sense of, uh, of that piece. Uh, the Blackboard Collaborate platform really is three different things. And most people are probably used to us from the web conferencing side. The web conferencing piece is what we're doing, for example, with Adobe today. Uh, you know, we're going ahead and, uh, and broadcasting this event so 43 other people from everywhere can go ahead and use us and, and, and get access to that content. Uh, beyond that, we've actually got two other pieces of technology. Uh, one is called the Enterprise Instant Messaging Technology. Uh, this comes to us from the Wimba side of the house. Uh, Wimba used to have a product called Pronto. Did anybody use Wimba Pronto here? So we have a few, actually, that's pretty good. That's very good. Uh, so you know, the presence and, and chat uh, piece is, is actually great. You know, the, the web conference is sort of this formal uh, structure. Uh, you know, you schedule a meeting, you schedule a session at a certain time, everybody comes together, and you're able to go ahead and do the interaction. The instant messaging and presence piece uh, is sort of the more informal learning. Uh, it's the hallway conversations uh, that happen in a physical space, you know, outside the, the structured side. So, so for example, uh, uh, using the Blackboard IM, as it's called now, used to be called Wimba Pronto, now we call it Blackboard IM. What you can do is as soon as somebody installs it, we'll go out and talk to the virtual learning environment, figure out all the different courses that the student is actually enrolled in. Uh, and we'll go ahead and, and bring that down. We'll also bring down all the different teachers that they have, the different classmates that they have, uh, the different student services setups that uh, universities might have, so financial aid or online libraries, any of those sorts of things. We can bring all of those services down to IM. And now the student can go ahead and have that sort of informal conversation. If I'm a working adult, I come home at 10 o'clock at night, uh, I need to be able to go ahead and finish up what it is that my homework is due for tomorrow. How do I do that? You know, I'm able to go ahead and, uh, uh, and, and go out into this Blackboard IM environment and, and just double click and uh, uh, figure out who else is online. And I'm able to go ahead and chat with them and, and, uh, and do, my, do my homework with those, uh, with those folks. And all, uh, the, both the IM and the web conferencing piece are sort of supplemented by the voice authoring. The voice authoring piece is, is more of an asynchronous piece. Uh, within the virtual learning environment, how do I add personalization? So I can go ahead and record an introduction to the course. Uh, I can go ahead and have students uh, discuss things back and forth using their voice. I can even do quizzes so for foreign languages and, uh, and, uh, uh, and, and, and courses like that. It's, it's much nicer to be able to go ahead and have that voice functionality there. And then all three of these functionalities are sort of deeply integrated into whichever learning management system that, uh, that you might have. Uh, so we're able to go ahead and, uh, and show that piece. I'm going to go ahead and flip through a few slides and uh, just sort of talk to you a little bit about uh, the impact that we're having 
So let me show you this video for a second. Hi, my name is Dr. Michael Sherman. I'm the Associate Vice President of Instructional Technology Support here at Drexel University in Philadelphia. We support the Collaborate Suite all across the Drexel University community. That's 13 colleges and schools. It gets broad use. It's accepted by many, many different academic units and administrative units as the go-to product when they need to engage their learners, their colleagues, and others. The primary purpose of bringing a, a tool like the Collaborate tool into the environment was to give it that more personal touch. Uh, in, in the old days, so I say the old days, you know, when we first learned to create distance education courses, it almost become like a, just a static textbook online. But once we were able to have this environment that we can utilize, like the Collaborate environment, now it's not only just a student to instructor relationship, but it's also a student to student relationship as well. So it creates that environment that the students are looking for as well as the instructor. It's converted our curriculum from quarters to semesters and with faculty spread all over the state and with the state budget being really tight with money right now, it's difficult to travel, so anything that we can do online or electronically, having virtual meetings is a tremendous asset for the faculty and for me and for the, the budget of this. Blackboard Collaborate plays a very important part. In fact, without that, I think that we could not really truly uh, be a what I call a very efficient and functioning uh, online school. That is the one key component to me that makes it worthwhile. So that sort of gives you an idea for how it is that people are, uh, are actually going ahead and using Blackboard Collaborate. I know I'm uh, short on time, so let me go ahead and, and end on uh, this slide. You know, the idea behind Blackboard Collaborate really was to have a single platform which allows you to go ahead and have that informal collaboration between students and teachers and the school entities and services at large to a very formal sort of, uh, you know, we can go ahead and do classroom sessions, we can go ahead and do virtual events, you know, all sort of combined into one product, which is all completely focused around education. You know, the, uh, the Blackboard organization, 90% of our customers are, are education related. Uh, so we really, you know, live and breathe education on an ongoing basis. Uh, and that's uh, you know that's that's really all our uh, all that we all that we really think about uh, uh, you know and I'll, I'll actually leave it at that and, and see if there's uh, there's any questions that that I might be able to answer at this point. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks. Okay, once again, can we take uh, questions from the floor and uh, please wait for a microphone? Let's start down the front here. Uh, hi there, David Kernahan from uh, JISC. Um, I just wanted to ask you about the very first slide that you showed, actually, uh, the uh, corporate motto of Blackboard, the everyone educated thing. Yeah. Uh, do you see education as something that's got a defined endpoint? Ah, very good point. Very good question. Uh, and, you know, I'm not sure that, uh, that education has a defined endpoint. Uh, you know, I know all of us are still learning. Uh, uh, but I, I know that many folks don't have access to any education at all. Uh, so while I don't think that there's an end point for people who have access, uh, there's certainly the beginning point that's missing for a lot. Uh, so I think uh, from our perspective, what we really want to be able to do is throughout the life of a learner, you, we want to make sure that the experience of education is better than what it is today. And for those who don't have any access at all, we want to be able to find ways uh, and work with educational institutions and work with others uh, to figure out how do we go ahead and get them access to, to at least provide that beginning point, uh, you know, which, which everybody should have access to. But no, I, I don't think that, uh, that there is an end point. You know, we're continuously learning, we're continuously figuring out what it is that we need to do. And you know, somebody told me, uh, you know, if, if, I, if I think about what's the biggest educational institution right now, that might actually be Google. Uh, you know, when, when I have a question, uh, you know, I'm, I'm usually not going to a textbook, I'm usually not going back to my professors, I'm actually going and doing that just-in-time learning. And people do that on a daily basis, uh, you know, billions of times a day, so, so I don't think that there's an end point at all. Thanks. Question there. Um, 
Do, do you in fact see a time point in the future where something like Google or Blackboard might actually take over managing universities? <laughs> um, you know, it's it's uh, it's interesting. You know, so Google actually had a, a thing called the Google Teacher Academy. Um, education is a very very complex task, uh, and I think so much of the learning actually happens in this interaction. You know, that that we're having right now. Uh, and, and so much of the interaction, so much of the learning for each student happens when the students interact with other students and students interact with uh, the teachers. And I'm not sure that all of that, you know, the just-in-time piece is great. You know, once I have that critical foundation that got laid for me about how to actually ask a question. When I, when I need to learn something, how do I actually ask that question? And then whatever information is coming to me, how do I critically understand it and make sure that I can draw the right conclusions from it. And I think that education process is not something that, that can completely be taken and, and, and learned you know, without this interaction piece at all. And I think that interaction is really necessary. To us, you know, Wimba actually used to have a slogan, people teach people. Uh, you know, it's, it, I think that, that teacher-student piece and the student-student piece is very, very key. And I don't think that that's actually ever going to go away. We've, we've done that now for 5,000 years. Uh, and, and, and we know that learning can actually happen that way. Uh, and it happens that way very, very nicely. So to me, that continues on. I don't think that's actually ever going to go away. I don't think Blackboard is someday going to publish a course which says, you know, start here when you're five and then uh, continue uh, taking these courses from five till 12 and, uh, and you'll have a degree and, and that'll be good. Uh, I, I don't think that that's, that's ever going to happen. I think that teacher-student interaction is always going to be needed. Uh, and, and, uh, and I think, you know, the, the breadth of technologies that I showed you from Blackboard, you know, that's, that's uh, that's a reflection on that. Uh, we know that it's not just you know, uh, uh, create content and create a flow uh, in one piece uh, for, for something that can go ahead and flow throughout. I think, uh, I think the interaction that we've got is, is always going to be needed. Thanks. Could I take an online question now? Of course. Um, it's an interesting one. Is Blackboard nimble enough to provide what Anne-Marie was talking about? Oh, by giving recipients what they want and find ways in which we can professionally accommodate those wants and needs. Are we nimble enough? Mm. Um, <laughs> it's, a, it's a leading question. Um, you know, Blackboard uh, has been in business now only for about 15 years. And uh, so I think, you know, to a large extent, we still view ourselves as a, as a fairly small company. Uh, and, uh, you know, even though from an educational perspective, Blackboard's got a very large footprint, you know, from a Wimba Illuminate perspective, the two companies that just became part of Blackboard last year, uh, iStrategy, which was the analytics company, just became part of Blackboard at the beginning of this year. Um, you know, we always think of ourselves as actually fairly small entities, uh, and we're working with customers on an ongoing basis. In fact, you know, nothing that we did, I didn't, talk a little bit about uh, you know, the new product that we just launched. We just launched something called Blackboard Collaborate 11. That's the uh, combination of Wimba and Illuminate sort of coming together, uh, built on the Illuminate architecture, but inherited the interface design that Wimba had been working on uh, for their future product called LiveX. But every single thing that we did there was as a result of talking to our product advisory council. We have uh, a product advisory council of 60 different institutions. And we met with them, you know, at the beginning it was once a month, then we met to once a week, and then we actually went to twice a week, where we were forever uh, cycling. You know, here's what we're building. Is this a good thing, or uh, should we change something different? Here's option A and option B. Which one do you think makes more sense to do? So to me, nimbleness is, is in the attitude. I don't think it's in the size of the organization. And I think as we go ahead and continue to go ahead and cycle through the, uh, through the experience that our customers really want, I think we can be. I think we can be nimble enough. I think we can be there to go ahead and provide, uh, provide the information and, and the solutions that people are looking for. It's, uh, it's, it is the Wild West, as, as Anne-Marie said. You know, it's something that you know, we're, we're learning on an ongoing basis. Uh, what should be the, what should be the, um, 
the, the deal with the Facebook or with Twitter or with Flickr or any of these other wide open consumer technologies in the educational space. How do we go ahead and do that balance of privacy versus sharing? Um, you know, and I think we're, we're learning from our customers. We're learning, you know, what it is that works. We're trying to provide parallel solutions. So you may not feel very comfortable with, uh, uh, you know, with just putting everything on Facebook, uh, but you need to be able to go ahead and, and, and interact with it in some way or the other. So we're forever learning on, on what it is that we need to do. And I think as long as we're doing that and we're talking to customers, I think we'll be nimble enough. Okay, on the note of forever learning, I'm afraid we're going to have to bring this session to a halt. But no thanks once again for an excellent Thank you. Thank you very much.